Hey everybody, Law here from Slapdash Studios to give you another quick tutorial on how to make a fun fantasy map for your D&D game. Uh, so today, I thought it would be interesting to show you guys how to make a lava map, um, where the party could be standing on, like, stone with some scary hot lava underneath them, because this is kind of a fun and dynamic map to utilize. And it uses a lot of the principles we talked about in the past two videos. So the uh, assets that I'm starting with is I have a layer of rock, uh, which has been tiled and textured just like we did in the last ones where you can duplicate and clear, uh, clean up the seams with a healing brush or you can do a tiled brush. Uh, and the same thing with a lava layer. And this is again 11 by 17 map. Um, that's what I usually like to work with. They're easy to print and they're cheap. And then of course we have, uh, to top it all off, a grid, just a one inch grid. So we're gonna start by cleaning these layers up, making them look more like the color scheme we want for the Santa Lava map. And you could picture this kind of molten rock is gonna be is gonna be fairly dark and not this kind of bright gray. So we're gonna start by turning the brightness down a bit on this, make it look a little bit more molten. Uh, we can turn the contrast up and we're gonna play with the colors a little bit too. So we're gonna go to color balance and I wanna see more blue and cyan in this so it has kind of a spooky dark rock texture so we're just going to bump it up a little bit and we'll be modifying more near the end once we actually see the lava coming through underneath it and then we're going to take our shadows and turn the blue up just a little bit more so right now this is looking fairly greenish but i think by the time we're done you're going to see what i'm doing and you're going to like it uh, next we're going to look at the lava layer and this is very bright but that's okay because again we want to see a high amount of contrast so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the yellow really pops out of that orange and red. So we're actually going to turn the brightness up just a little bit and then the contrast up even more. And you can really see the, the yellow versus red coming through there. But we're not going to spend too long on it. That should be fine. So we're going to move the rock layer in front of the lava layer. And now we're just basically going to carve away some of the rock layer to make rivers of lava flowing through the terrain. So there are many ways you could do this, and many of which I would agree are a little easier than this one, um, although they're all quite simple. Uh, I just think this is a really good way to kind of visualize how cutting away layers can work. So what we're going to do is we've created a new layer on top of this one. Of course, we're going to label it because that helps us stay organized. And we're just going to call it River Drawing, because this is us drawing the shape we're going to have that river take. So we're going to use a white and just kind of a jagged brush. And we're just going to sort of draw some paths. Kind of organic looking, nothing too fancy. Keep it simple. And you don't want to take up too much of the map with lava or else the party's not going to have a lot of room to move around, you know. But you definitely still want it to be a threat. So we're just going to kind of make a little fork. And you can clean this up as you go. I'm just going to kind of do it done in one. And then I'm going to widen up the top a little bit so it looks more like it's coming from a bigger source. And then we can just fill this in with some white. And this is basically going to be our rough lava shape we're going to utilize. And the easiest way to do this is you can just go to select color range. There's only one color on this layer, which is white, so that'll automatically just pick that all up. Or you can just use your magic wand tool and click it, because if your threshold is in the right spot, it should be easy to pick up. And we're gonna take that layer, we're gonna hide it. You can see the selection still exists. And we're gonna go to our rock layer. We're gonna go to layer, um, new, and via copy. And the reason we're doing uh, copy is because that means we can still use the other layer as we need to. So we have this one saved, and we're going to call that River Rock, I suppose. <laughs> um, we're going to make that selection again, and we're going to do layer, or select inverse, and once again layer copy. Uh, so what you can see as we do this is when I take that away, the actual rock layer, um, it's going to reveal the lava underneath it. So we're going to call this uh, Rock Minus River. Again, not the smartest naming conventions ever used, but whatever helps you stay organized. And so we can see there's just this really weird, almost like uh, construction paper look going on here that makes this not look super organic or nice. So some of the things we can do to help with that are we're going to, once again, use this nice white map that we've made to make a selection, and we're going to select it off of the lava layer. 
we need to go layer via copy. And then we can just turn off the original lava layer and the original rock layer. So now all the things we're working with are just this selection of lava and this selection of rock. The rock being on top, and I'm gonna call this one Lava River. So the first thing we can do is take this rock layer and we're gonna do some color matching now that we can see the lava coming through. So I'm guessing we're gonna wanna bump up the reds a little bit more. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Uh, we're gonna take some of the shadows and bump the red up a little bit. And then we're gonna turn the brightness down more. And the contrast up a bit more. That's looking pretty good. I feel nice about that. Um, now we're going to take that rocky layer and we're going to give it a little more depth. So we're going to go to bevel and emboss. Uh, we're going to go from screen under highlight mode to darken. And this is basically just going to create a shadow around the outside. So it'll look like there's some height between the lava and the rocks. We can adjust the depth and the size and you can just kind of see, okay, that's really, really dark. Uh, the way we can con uh, contrast that is to turn the opacity down a bit. But it is starting to kind of give a lip to this rock, and I like that. That is a good thing. And we can soften it up a little bit too. That's going to make it not look just like we did it with a brush. And just kind of play with it. Um, make it look the, the way that looks natural to you. I'm thinking that looks okay for now. I'm actually going to turn this background lava layer back on too, because maybe some of you eagle-eyed watchers could see there was just a hint of white around the outside, and we don't really need that. That's fine. But keeping this selection of lava available to us means we can do things like this, where we can add an inner shadow uh, to increase this kind of dark line that surrounds where the lava and the rock meet. So if we turn up the distance on this, you can see we're creating more of a gap. Um, and so we can change things like the size, and that's what we want, is like a nice, soft look to it. Um, just play with the opacity a little bit till you get to something where it actually looks like there's a little bit of distance there. And the choke is what's going to make it uh, really pull in, so we don't need that to be too high. We just want to outlight the very outside. And this is looking pretty good. I like that. And now we can just play around with like a burn tool. Um, and what this is going to do, you can use whatever brush you want. I like a nice flowery soft shape for this sort of thing. Uh, I'm not using any custom ones or anything. Is you can just kind of paint around the outside, and it's just going to darken the darkest shapes first. Um, and this can make some of the lava look like it has bits of rock floating in it, or it has that kind of like char broiled top. And that's a fun thing to see. And you can do the same thing to the rock layer, uh, which is our rock minus river. And so you can kind of have like the scorched earth of just some nice dark spots where, you know, maybe some, some intense heat happened and melted away some of this molten rock. And we're just kind of playing around with the brush. We're not doing anything too crazy. Uh, nothing scientific or calculated, just random. And that's looking okay to me. Uh, another way we can add a little more depth to this is if we add a drop shadow underneath this layer just to play with it and see how that height looks so you can do a little bit like that and that's softening up the edges which I like because it kind of cuts down on that sharp contrast and we're probably going to play with the colors on this rock face a little bit more too it's not quite where I want it and that's the nice thing about having these sliders so you can really get in there and just kind of use your eyeballs to match it how you want it yeah, I'm feeling like that hint of red and a little brightness is going to be good for this. So, we're looking pretty good here. We have an ominous lava map with this river flowing through. And if we want to call it a day on this, what we can do is we turn our grid back on. As you know, I always keep a top layer that's an 11 by 17 one inch grid. And I like to use colors on the grid to make it pop out, which would be an outer glow. And the preset is going to be this kind of ivory yellowish white. Um, but what we can do is we can actually select some of these lava colors. And I'm going to go for like a really nice bright orange, something like that. And that will be the glow that's placed on the grid. And if we can play with the size and stuff, you can see. Um, actually, I'm going to try to do a nice deep red. I think that's going to be a little more ominous. But we want it to be bright so that it shows up as a highlight. Yeah, that's looking good. And now if we zoom in on this, you can really see that the, 
the red glow from the grid adds to the heat and, and kind of melty doom of this whole map. Now obviously we can put a lot more work into this to make the river look more natural. Uh, we could pull some more off of the rock layer to have little floating islands of stone out here. Um, but this is just a nice tutorial on how to get started and see how the layering works and things you can do to kind of make them look like they're actually sitting on top of each other. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope that your party takes a whole lot of lava damage when you manage to push them into this deadly river. And thanks for joining us. Check out more videos for Slapdash. Of course, listen to the League of Ultimate Questing, a very fun D&D podcast that comes out every Monday. And until next time, I think you're pretty cool.